In this video, I have a really cool idea to show you guys a little bit about behind the scenes of how I actually film a b-roll scene. For this one, it's going to be a little different in the way that it's going to be more of a live style and you're going to follow me along while I film a little b-roll section on this little point and shoot camera. This is a Sony RX100. Uh, we're not going to use a gimbal, no stabilizer, nothing. It's just this guy handheld. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want you guys to see that you can also take your B-roll to a more professional looking style without a bunch of expensive fancy equipment. Of course all that stuff helps, but you can do it with this. You can even do it with your foot. We're out on the beach here. The sun's like almost gonna start setting pretty soon. We've got some nice light going on. We've got some cool interesting things. We've got palm trees. we got all the waves and the beach. I am gonna film a little B-roll section in the way that I see a lot of beginners and a lot of people that aren't quite sure how to film like cinematic style videos and just after that I'm going to show you how I would change those shots and how I would do it to make it look way more cinematic and way more professional and way more legit. We've got a couple cool things going on here. Uh, we got the sunset and everything going down over there and we got this nice beach we got a couple of these palm trees. So if I was a beginner I might do something like this. I might be like, okay, cool. Let me show that I'm at the beach. And I might get, I might start over here or something and like show that I'm at the beach. And kind of pan down here and show this cool sunset. And then I might like these palm trees also. So I'll like show those and then like come down to the beach again. Okay, and that would be one shot. Maybe these palm trees are quite cool. So uh, maybe I'll get a shot of these, like something like this, and I kind of like them. And I like those ones down there are quite cool. Yeah. And that would be my next shot. And then something else might be interesting would be these waves. So maybe I'd be tempted to get a shot of these. Kind of get a shot from over here. I'll wait till there's like a cool wave. And there's quite cool waves over there, so I'll film that. And there's a person there. We might do something like this of the sunset. And then we'll pan up here and show all these palm trees. They're quite cool. And maybe some of these ones too. And that's it. That would be our little beginner cinematic sequence. Let me show you guys what it looks like when I cut it together with some cool music in the background. So as you can see from that one, eh, it's okay, it's not amazing, it doesn't captivate the audience, there's nothing like really that great that's going to make people want to keep watching it. It kind of just seems like what it kind of is, which is someone just standing on the beach and like pointing the camera at cool things that they think are interesting. So what we're going to do for the pro version of this B-roll sequence are a couple of things and I think there's a few things that make the biggest difference. And the first one is to shoot with intention and to isolate subjects that you want to film. So one of the biggest problems that I see beginners making is that they'll pan around. They'll see something interesting over there like the beach and then there'll be something over there like the palm tree and they'll pan from the beach to the palm tree. Whereas what you actually want to do is separate them and you'll notice in cinema and in a lot of more professional looking videos you very rarely see a pan and the camera turning like this. It's nice to add movement to your shots, but what you want to do is you either want to go in or out in smooth movements and if you do want to go from side to side, it's more of a slide like this. It's sliding across and it's not really turning like that. It's kind of a weird look when you do this in things. So the thing that we're going to do is we're going to break it up. We're going to say, here's a really cool beach. That's something that's very interesting and we want to get a shot of that. And there's some cool palm trees over here and we want to get a shot of that too. So instead of panning to the palm trees, we're going to get one shot of the beach first. So let's start over here and what we can do is maybe we can start down low, which is also something super useful, is just to change your perspectives. Filming from eye level like this, eh, it kind of looks average. That's what you see all day when you're walking around. If you do something like go down like this, all of a sudden everything looks like quite grand and cool. You're like looking up at everything. 
So let's start down here. And we're gonna do like a smooth movement like this. And we're gonna reveal everything. We're just gonna try to do it super steady, like it's handheld. We don't have a gimbal or anything. We could start looking straight down into the sand. And as we push forward, we're gonna reveal up. I think that one works really well. So now we can move on. We've got our like opening shot of the beach. Now we're gonna go cool. These palm trees look really cool. So let's get a shot of just these palm trees by themselves and get something like this. That's pretty cool. The other big thing about the difference between amateurs and more professional style looking stuff is move around. So if you wanna film those waves, don't film them from here. Like get in the action, walk around, get all the different angles, like move around, get it, like get involved with your environment. So this ocean looks really cool. We're gonna go right down to the edge of the shore and get some shots of the waves. This is looking quite cool. So I'm gonna get one more shot over here. And again, I'm just gonna do a slow punch in. Okay, I think I'm happy with that one. Let's head down to the waves. Oh, this looks cool. So now we got our big wide shot of the ocean and we also got a close up, we can cut them together. They're gonna work really nicely. So I definitely think that we could get another shot of a palm tree, uh, maybe a wider one. So looking back on these ones is pretty cool. And something I love to do in my B-roll is to get some foreground in your shot. It adds so much depth. So instead of just getting a shot of these palm trees, I think what we're gonna do is go behind this palm tree and start with the camera behind it, get some foreground and do a bit of a reveal of these palm trees, of the other palm trees. It's gonna look super cool. So let's try that out here. Okay, so we're gonna start a little bit zoomed in and we're gonna be behind this palm tree. And we're gonna slowly reveal out like this. Let's try another one. Okay, I'm happy with that one. Come and look over here. This guy kind of goes right down there and creates a really nice leading line. So let's try to get a shot from just behind it looking over. This river is looking really cool with these kind of lines on the side of it, how it's cut through the sand and all the water's going down there to the waves. Let's see if we can get right down in here and get some close-ups of this water moving. And our next one, we're gonna go get the close-up of the waves that we're gonna cut just after this. Another thing that I like to do with my cinematic B-roll sections is if you noticed when we first were starting the video out a lot of our movements were punching in and they were all moving forward and that's a really nice way to kind of give the viewer a feeling of going further into the scene and getting immersed in it more the same way that we would start off with really wide shots and then the next shots would be close-up detail shots and all of those things are kind of just bringing the viewer further into the scene and what we're going to do now to end off our b-roll section is the opposite so we're going to get some shots that are moving out and getting bigger, wider ones to end on. Let's get a couple of those quickly before the light completely disappears. And then we should be good. Let's still keep it low to make it interesting. And we're gonna do a slow pull back. And we'll do an even lower one. That's gonna be it for the second B-roll section. I edited this one to music as well, and I did a couple of editing tricks, like some slow motion and some speed ramping, added a bit of cool sound effects, and this is how the pro version looks. Check it out. Okay, that's it for this one. Let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this one, let me know down in the comments because I would like to do another video like this that features a subject, so the same style, but it will involve a person and filming a person. I think that could be really interesting. Let me know if it's something that you guys want to see. Otherwise, hit that like button, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. 
and I will see you in the next one. Peace.